third graders, Mrs. Hales here with your next art lesson. Today we're doing one of my favorite lessons and it is called Drawing Rainforest Birds. Um, we're gonna learn a little bit about the rainforest and read a great book about the rainforest and then I'll come back with you and show you how to draw two different kinds of birds, a macaw or a toucan. When you're listening to this story, um, listen to the animals closely because they give us clues to things that, um, reasons why we need to save the rainforest, why it's important. See if you can come up with three reasons why it's important to save the rainforest. The animals um, talk about more reasons than that, but let's see if you can listen for three. The Great Kapok Tree, a tale of the Amazon rainforest written and illustrated by Lynn Cherry. This map shows us in green where the tropical rainforests are on, the, on our continent, Africa, South and Central America, and Asia. In the Amazon rainforest, it is always hot. In the heat, everything grows and grows. The tops of the trees in the rainforest are called the canopy. The animals that live there are like lots of light. Colorful parrots fly from tree to tree. Monkeys leap from branch to branch. The bottom of the rainforest is called the understory. Animals that live there like darkness. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. The larger man stopped and pointed to the great kapok tree and then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. Chop, chop, whack, whack. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree, and before he knew it, he fell asleep. A boa constrictor lived in the tree. He slithered down to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the axe. He slid very slow, close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this is a tree of miracles where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it, chop it down. He buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this tree. I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower, pollinating all the trees and flowers in the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these trees will wither and die. There will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people will come and settle on the land. They will set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the forest disappears, where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins will remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forests, you will destroy that which gives us all life. A child from the Yamamoto tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and beautiful and rare animals they were. The man looked up and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air. 
suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the floor's floor, but he heard no sound. The creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree, but suddenly he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. He dropped his axe and walked out of the forest. Um, Lynn Cherry, the author, wrote us a note in the back of her book. She says, Dear readers, I wrote the great Kapok tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforest. The great Kapok tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest. But we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. So the darker green um, color here is where the temperate rainforests are in the United States on the West Coast. So some of the reasons that it's important for us to save the rainforest are trees produce oxygen. We need oxygen to clean out our air and to, we breathe oxygen. So um, we need trees, we need a lot of trees in order to make all that oxygen. Um, the animals that live in the rainforest pollinate other plants to grow so that, and we need these plants to keep growing so that animals and birds and insects have uh, plants to eat. If also, if the animals don't have plants to eat, then they can't feed the other animals who might eat them. So it messes up the whole food chain if we don't have the rainforest. Um, the other thing that forests do is they prevent erosion. Erosion is when the soil washes away and um, the soil isn't, there's not a good enough soil there to grow stuff. So um, we, need, we need forests and grass and things like that to prevent erosion. All right, boys and girls, um, I'm gonna show you now um, the different layers of the rainforest. I think this is so cool. So the great Kapok tree is so big and tall that it would be in the emergent layer. So it would be the t one of the tallest layers in the rainforest. So what kind of animals do you think live up here in the tallest or emergent layer? Sure, lots of insects, lots of birds, um, maybe some uh, butterflies, things like that. Maybe some snakes go up there to look for dinner. Um, and contrast that with the forest floor. What kind of animals do you think would live at the bottom of the rainforest, forest on the forest floor? Yes, you would have jaguars there or panthers. You could have worms and beetles and all the creatures that live in the, in the soil. Um, you could have sloths and tapirs there, frogs, and a fish, anybody that lives in water. Um, do you think it's nice and bright and light on the forest floor? No, I think it's very dark and um, very shaded down there and probably very wet. So you would have m very different types of creatures that live on the forest floor than live in the canopy or the emergent So layer. obviously another detrimental or very serious negative effect of having um, not, not enough rainforest is none of these animals or a lot of these animals would lose their homes. And if you don't have a home... Um, it makes it much harder for you to survive. You don't have shelter to protect you from predators. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna start with showing you how to draw a macaw and how to um, put that macaw or that bird in on a branch in a composition. So there, these are three um, common or popular types of macaws with lots of different coloration. You're gonna start your drawing with your paper horizontal and you're gonna draw a branch at the bottom, close to the bottom of your paper. You wanna put a long skinny oval and you want your oval tilted a little bit. So the left side goes, to, the top goes to the left side and the bottom goes to the right. Then you're gonna draw a big wing on the outside of that oval and you wanna draw a circle on the top. You wanna always connect the circle on the top, that's the head to the body so you don't have a bobble head. Also, the top of the wing is a little bit pointier and sticks out a little farther. Now, the cool thing about the beak, the beak is actually part of the head. So don't draw it stuck on the outside, but draw it into the head. 
you want to draw um, kind of rounded triangles for his legs and then put some sharp claws for his feet because he has to hang, hold on tightly to the branches. Um, you can also draw some tail feathers that stick out underneath that are really long for your macaw. Notice that the back leg or the kind of rounded triangle is a little bit smaller and a little bit higher than the front leg, which appears a little bit bigger and a little bit lower because it's closer to you, the viewer. Macaws also have cool um, feathers that are different colors around their eyes, like either white or yellow. Now I'm gonna show you how to draw a toucan. To draw a toucan, about an inch up above your branch, you're gonna draw um, an oval and your oval this time for the toucan is gonna be horizontal. Um, again, he's got two kind of stubby rounded triangles for his legs and then you wanna give him some little feet that have sharp claws because uh, like, like all birds, they need to hang on to the branches. Um, now you're gonna draw his head. So, but first you have to draw the neck. Um, the neck, you could draw a circle that's inset a little bit on the left or right end of your oval. So the circle overlaps your oval a little bit. And then you want to erase where those lines intersect. Just like the macaw, the toucan has a beak that is part of his head. So you want to draw it in into his head a little bit. Now, um, the beak on the toucan is huge. It's almost about two thirds as long as his body. So you wanna draw a huge beak for the toucan. And just like the macaw, the beak has a little point on the end so that he can open um, different nuts and fruits in the rainforest. Macaws have real, I'm sorry, toucans have really big eyes and they often have this really pretty yellow um, color feathers under their eye, kind of on their chest. They have big wings that are, um, on the side of their bodies that will hang out a little bit or be a little bit bigger than their bodies. All right, now I'm gonna put it all together and show you how I do did my entire composition. So I started with an oval, two rounded triangles, a circle for his head, connect the head to the neck, draw the beak and the eye. You could draw your wings out or flat next to the body. What are some other things you're gonna put in your picture? I wanna have a snake wrapping around a branch, which I'll show you how to draw in just a minute. I wanna have some of those big, beautiful tropical leaves that I love with the cutout sections. And then I have to draw a few leaves on my trees. What kinds of insects or other small animals could you put in your picture? I added a spider and a spider web and some butterflies. I've had students add monkeys or bumblebees. Pretty much anything you can think of that you would find in the in the rainforest, you can put in there. So when I look at my picture as a whole, it's very balanced. There's things um, in all parts of my picture and they're all working together. Some things are overlapping in front of or behind other things. And there's not a lot of large empty spaces in my composition. Now I'm gonna show you how to wrap a snake around a branch if you wanna put that in your picture. You're gonna start with drawing a branch and then I'm gonna put my snake's head on top of the branch and then um, he's gonna wrap around the branch and he's gonna go up and down, up and down. So I'm gonna have his head on top of the branch and I'm gonna have his back on top of the branch twice. And then in between those areas, I'm gonna have his, his body underneath the branch twice. So where his body is in front of the branch, it's wrapping around the branch and you can see his body. But where it goes behind the branch, you can't see his body and you can see the branch. So it's kind of like a pattern. It goes in front of the branch, behind the branch, in front of the branch, behind the branch, and then I'm gonna finish him off in front of the branch. Obviously, you can make your snake much longer than I made my snake. You can give him an eye and you can give him a tongue if you want. All right, boys and girls, a lot of information for you today. Your goal today is to get your bird, your tropical bird drawn. It can be real or imaginary bird. You can have one or a family of birds. Um, and then to also get some other things in your composition like leaves, other animals, or insects. I will see you next class.